church. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us this morning and this evening. We just pray that you'd be blessed. Before we jump into the word, I just want to let you know some announcements. Amen. The first of which, our youth, our ROL connected dot youth on Instagram is still going on strong. Every Thursday we meet up and we do a live at seven o'clock. Please join in. It's an amazing time. Amen. Um, on Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, we have Link Up Tuesday. Um, it's just a great time just to socialize with each other and play games and have fun. And then on uh, Saturday, we have prayer and devotion. And it's just a great opportunity to get together, to pray for one another, uplift one another, and just share what God has put in our heart. Amen. Um, kids are cool. We love, love, love that you guys are being blessed um, by our Sunday school lessons. They're going out. They're going to be on the playlist here on the YouTube channel um, at ROL. And you'll just find them on the playlist. And they come on every Sunday at 11 a.m. to bless your kids. Amen. My Savior and I, they're still going strong, ladies. If you haven't joined already, please let us know by the comments down below, or you could get in contact with one of the leaders or pastors, and we would love, love, love to get that information to you. It's My Savior and I. It's a women's support group. It's an amazing time of just worship, prayer, and word. Amen? Um, women's discipleship, we had an amazing time last month, and we want to do it again. So we're doing it on the 18th of July. And that's going to be at 10:15 for coffee and fellowship and then followed by worship at 10 30. so please make time ladies to join us it was an amazing turnout last time it was an awesome opportunity just to say hello and see your lovely faces um, so we just pray that you would come out and join us again this month um, men we have a men's discipleship going on also um, on the 25th of july and that's at 10 a.m and your guest speaker will be pastor richard joy we love pastor joy he is an amazing pastor he's our pastor's pastor it's such a blessing to just hear a word from him amen um, I I know he's going to just pour into the man's heart. Um, that wraps up our announcement. So um, please feel free to join us in any or all things that apply to you. We would love to see you um, either through Zoom or through our Instagram, whatever it is. Just keep in contact with us. We love you. Church, it is time to bless the Lord. We just want to thank you so much for partnering with us. We want to thank you from the pastor to the staff to the congregation from just sowing a seed into this ministry. It's because of your generosity, church, that we get to do these things like YouTube and um, buy all the equipment. I know you don't see behind the scenes, but there's a lot of things behind me, amen, um, to get this going. So we just want to thank you. Um, there's three ways to give, amen, the first of which is Cash App, and that's at R-O-L-C-C-S-G-V. Um, our second way of giving is Venmo, and you could just type in River of Life Christian Church. And the third way is Zell, and that's at R-O-L-C-C-S-G-V at yahoo.com. We just thank you so much for sowing a seed into this ministry. Thank you for partnering with us and believing in what God has for us, um, this purpose for this ministry. Amen. We just love you and we pray blessings over you. Amen. Good evening, church. Welcome to the River of Life Midweek Service. I am so thankful and so blessed to be with you here today. Um, I just hope that whenever you're watching this, wherever you're watching this, whatever device that you're, you're streaming this on, that where you are right now, that there's a move of God happening in your life, that the words that I'm about to speak are meant for you. And if it doesn't hit you today, that it just stays with you into the moment that God wants it to hit. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ken Ochoa and I'm one of the leaders at River of Life. Um, we just thank you for being with us as always. This is going up for a midweek service, but trust me, if it's you're watching this on a Thursday, on a Friday, it doesn't matter. God is going to move. Let's go ahead and just open up in a word of prayer right now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the ability to bring the word. Thank you for everybody who is streaming this right now, who is watching this, who is listening to this message right now, that they just be blessed, Father, and that you just take care of us, you continue to be with us, and that you continue to use me to tell your words, Father God, that you continue to use me to give forth your message, Father God, and that I just be honorable to, to your work and to your beings, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I want to just speak to you as if I've never spoken to you before. Some people are going to be seeing this for the first time. Some people know me very well, but I kind of want to set a foundation. And when I, when I do that, I'm setting a foundation because I want you to know that this message comes from a very real place. 
It's not something that was just pulled offline or someone else gave me. I want to be very real with this message. So in order to do that, I want to, I want to just set a foundation of who I am. So first off, I want to just tell you a little about myself. I am, I guess you could say I'm a fan of storytellers. I appreciate the skill and the, everything that goes into telling a story. And you can be a storyteller in very, in many different mediums. If you're, if you're an artist and you have something you want to convey through your art form, if you're a musician and there is a feeling or if there is an action you want to bring out, an emotion that you want to bring out, you can use your music to bring out that story. Traditionally, you also think about writers. You think about people who write for television, people who write for movies, and they are storytellers. They're telling fictional stories for entertainment. And I have to admit, I really do like the stories that they tell. And traditionally, we think about artists. We think about authors, I'm sorry. We think about authors, writers of books and novels, even comics and everything that goes into it. So I'm a fan of storytellers. And some of the most, the earliest forms of storytelling it's just person to person. Just think about the times that you have been with your friends and family, when you've been sitting in the backyard, exchanging stories, talking about what happened, talking about, oh, this happened to me when I was this age. Oh, this happened when I was this age. Those are the exchanging of stories. And that's the place where my message takes place right now. Our first scripture for today, we're gonna to be in Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 27. And our scripture goes, Do not withhold good from those whom, whom it is due, when it is the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, Go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it to you, when you have it with you. Now, this message is, when this, this scripture is talking about, if there is someone in need, if there's someone who has something and you have the ability to do it, do it at that time. Do it. Don't say, OK, I'll get you tomorrow when you have it now. And that leads me into the story that I want to tell. Now, this is a story. It starts This is a story of three people. The first person is a young is a young woman. She's in her she's in her teens. And she's growing up during the Great Depression. The Great Depression is such a time of struggle in our nation. It's a time of financial struggle. And it's hitting both the poor and the affluent alike. People are having to sacrifice the things that they've been used to, the comforts that they've been, you know, that they've acquired to make sure that they have a roof over their heads, to make sure that they have food on their table to make sure they can keep their families together. And at this time, these neighborhoods and these groups, there's stories of people bonding together over, over certain events, over certain issues, that they just make this sacrifice for the greater good. Soon after World, soon after the Great Depression, where the United States gets into World War II, another time of struggle with our with our nation. It's covers everyone. It, it affects everyone. And once again, the citizens of our nation are asked to sacrifice. This time, not just financially, but they're asked to sacrifice so that our armed service people can have more. People are rationed on their food so that people on the front lines can have more. We're asked to use less there were drives to get rubber, to get steel, to get iron, to get clothing, so that the people on the front lines could have more. And it was a time of great sacrifice for our country, but it was done willingly. It was done for the greater good. So as we go forward in time, this, our, this young woman, she's now in her 20s. She's, her family is beginning to reclaim what they had lost. They're beginning to reacquire the sacrifices that they made. And her herself, she's now married. 
she has a uh, children of her own and she starts to once again reacquire the things that were had to be sacrificed she remembers the furniture that was in their parents house and she sees an antique chair and she buys it and she puts it in a room and locks it away she sees a painting that that was once standing over over their living room wall so she buys it puts it in a room locks it away and she continues to do this and she continues to reacquire these things that make a house a home that bring comfort to her that remind her of the time when she was young, the home, the, the way her home used to be. We fast forward now her oldest daughter, right around the same age in her teens, begins to question her mom. And she asked her, mom, why do you have these things, these beautiful things locked away in her room that no one can see? And the mom asked, the mom, she answers and says, well, I'm saving those for a special occasion. I'm saving those for when something big happens. And like most teenagers do, she questions it. Like, that doesn't make sense. Because to her, it's been 16 years of her life. And throughout that time, there have been birthdays, there have been celebrations, there have been Thanksgivings, Christmas. They've had to mourned people that they've lost. They've celebrated new lives in their family with children being born. There were many, many events that could have qualified as a special occasion in her mind, but to her, and to her mother's mind, that, that wasn't it. She was saving those, she was saving the, the, those things, those possessions, those, those special pieces for a greater occasion. And I think back to my life as well. I can think of my grandmother who had a china cabinet and she had her finest dishes in there. She had uh, these crystal bowls that I don't think I've ever seen her touch. Even when you opened it, there was a smell that came to it that it was, there was, the air was like untouched. Like it had never, no air had ever creeped in there. And depending on your own family home, depending on, on your own household, you may have had a fancy room where no one really sat, where there was the good couches that no one wanted to sit on, but you had your living room where everybody was in, but you still had a fancy room which no one really wanted to go into because it was too, it was too nice and no one was allowed to touch anything. That's what's going through this, this young girl's mind. She's, we have this fancy room that no one's allowed to use, that no one's allowed to see, but we're saving it for a special occasion and it doesn't make sense. So now we fast forward and that, that teenage girl, she's now a young woman. She has children of her own. And following her mother's footsteps, she, she also begins to acquire things, nice things to put in her home. She has nice dishes, nice wine glasses, nice furniture. She has good things to be laid out that are put away. But here's the difference. She does bring them out and she does show them for special occasions. Now her oldest son asked her a very similar question. Mom, why doesn't, why does grandma have a room full of things and never uses it, but we use the things in our house? And the mom smiles at her son and says, your grandma always wanted to save things for a special occasion. And I want to tell you, any day is a special occasion. Any day can be something to celebrate. Now, I tell that story and I gave you that scripture because I want to drive home a message with you today that, that God's given me. Any day is a great day to turn your life over to God. Any day is a perfect day to begin to start serving our Lord. Any day is a great day to begin to kick that addiction, to save someone in your family, to commit to something bigger than yourself. As we go back to our scripture in Proverbs 3.27, it says, do not withhold good from those who it is due. Imagine you have the ability to save somebody. Imagine there's someone in your, in your home, in your own family, your friends, your work, someone that you, you know kind of, but you don't really know them. Guess what? 
You don't have to wait for a special occasion to reach out to that person. You don't have to wait for a good time to invite them to church, to invite them to, to read the word with you, to give them a scripture. This idea of we're waiting for a special occasion to do something, the point is if we keep waiting for a special occasion to happen, we've missed so many opportunities that could have been used at that time. I just wanna say that with so much going on in our world right now, with things that we may have put off in the world, is it now a good time to take those risks and experience what you may have been putting off? But I wanna bring it back to Bring it back to the word. Is it now a good time to get saved? Is it now a good time to save your neighbor? Is it now a good time to speak to someone at your job who you may know is struggling, who you may know is going through something because they shared it with you, but you don't want to be too forthcoming. You don't want to be too aggressive towards them because you don't know how they're going to react. Well, guess what? The moment that you're, your moment you're waiting for something, the moment you're waiting for an opportunity, there already was one. The moment you open your mouth. Just think about the things right now that you in your own personal life maybe, maybe have thought of. You know what? One day, I'm going to take that trip. You know what? One day, I'm going to take my family and we're going to visit our, our, our relatives on the East Coast. One day... I'm gonna take, you know, I'm gonna take my daughter and we're gonna go see where her grandmother was born. One day I'm gonna pick up that book and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it. One day I'm going to learn that second language, that third language. One day I'm gonna take that extra class and I'm gonna finish what I started. But the more we're waiting for a special time, the more we're waiting for the right time to do something, we've missed so many opportunities. Do you know, church? the three most attended church days are Christmas, Easter, and Mother's Day. Those are the three largest attended church days. And don't get me wrong, I was invited to our church by Randy on Easter. He invited myself, you know, my good friend, we used to work together, he invited me to an Easter service and naturally I brought my wife and my two boys and we attended service here at the River of Life. And to say that there was a move of God would be an understatement. It wasn't some miraculous thing that happened, but we felt the move of God. We felt the people around us. We felt how comfortable we were in that home with those people, with our pastor, Pastor Randy, with Pastor Gina, and just the comfort that they gave us. And here we are all this time later, still serving with them, still working with them, still just doing God's will. And myself, here I am bringing you the word today because someone invited me, someone took the chance and said, you know what, come to church with me. You can do that on a special occasion, but guess what? You can also do that on a Tuesday. You can do that on a midweek service on YouTube. You can do that on a Friday Bible study. You don't have to wait for a special occasion to make these things happen. In our next scripture, Hebrews 3, verse 13, it says, but, but exalt one another daily while it is called today. Now, today is capitalized. It's today, okay? There are so many things that you can do today. And I just really want to emphasize that to you. This idea that we're going to do things later or we're going to plan for it is a great idea. Don't get me wrong. But the, the more that you're planning, the more that you're thinking and saying to yourself, I'm going to do these things. I'm going to do this, you know, whatever it is. I'm going to make this goal. I'm going to finish this thing. You know what's even better? Starting today. And the scripture says, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Our scripture is saying, do what you need to do today 
so that you don't fall back. And I'm telling you, church, there are so many times where I feel I should have said something. Maybe not in the biblical sense, but definitely I should have said something to somebody. I should have put up a better argument. I should have said the right thing. I should have said a softer thing. I should have said, you know, let's talk about it as opposed to just letting it go. And those are the things that kind of haunt us sometimes. I've, I've often said, no one ever looks back on their life and says, you know what? I wish I would have sat around and done nothing more. There are very few people who I can think of who, who are so, who've accomplished so much and achieved everything they've ever done. They sit around and say, you know what? I wish I would have done less. A lot of us right now who are adults with children of our own think back to our school days and say, you know what? I wish I would have done this in school. Or you know what? I wish I would have tried out for this in school. Or you know what? I wish I would have joined that group in school. Because we put it off. We said, no, not today. No, I'm, I'm going to hold it back. I'll do it another time. Or you know what? I'm, I'm not ready. I'm, I'm not confident in myself to do something. We can keep doing that to ourselves all the time. We continue to talk ourselves out of doing these things. And next thing you know, so much time has passed that we don't even know what we were doing. I just wanna just encourage you, Lord. I just wanna just encourage our Lord to just, if, if, if God is giving you something, if God, if God is giving you a message, if God is giving you a task or an idea or or a ministry to do, don't wait till tomorrow. Because you know what? What you're doing is holding back, like in our first scripture. You're telling your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it. You don't know the impact that your work will have on somebody else. If you're a musician, play. If you're a singer, sing. If you're a cleaner, clean. If you're a cook, cook. If there's something that you do that can help someone, you have no idea the effect that you can have by you doing it, but you also don't know the effect that you can have by not doing it. There is no waiting till the end here, folks. There is no waiting here till something else to happen. This isn't a Marvel movie. There's no end credit scene. You don't have to wait till the very end for something to happen. In Proverbs 27, 1, it says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Amen to that. You, we don't know what's going to bring forth, what's going to happen. I'll tell you this honestly, and I won't be personal for a second. We made plans back in March, before March, to do certain things. We had ideas that we were going to do. We were going to do certain things, you know, with our friends, with our family. We were going to do it. And then now here we are practicing social distancing, making sure our family is safe, working from home, kids going to school online, making our, making our, our, making sure that we're safe, that our home is protected, that we are not getting sick or getting someone else sick. But what happened? We made those plans and now we had to put them off and postpone them. How many of you are saying right now, you know what, when this is all over, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see such and such. Or you know what, when, 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 we, you know, when we're safe again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go take my, you know, my, my mom and my dad and we're gonna go do this thing. Or you know what, when this is over, I, you know what, I, I wanna go to this buffet and hit it up because I just wanna do something out with my friends or do whatever. That is the motivation for this right now. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I was given this message back in January and I was ready to preach it. I was ready to bring it to the word, ready to bring it to, to our church the very next time I, I, I preached. But then COVID-19 happened and we started having our services online. But guess what? This message fits even better today than it would have in March. And you know why? Because God knew. God gave me the word, the spirit was moving and just knew that, you know what, this message is going to mean even more during this time than it would have in March. 
in March, it still would have had the same effect. I still would have been encouraging you to say, do these things today. Save your friends today. Invite your neighbors to church. Get involved. Get more involved. But guess what? Here we are right now. We're home. We're streaming our services. And right now we're just thinking about, you know what, when this is over, I'm going to do this. I just want to just encourage you, Lord, encourage you, church. When I say church, I mean everybody. I'm going to say I just want to encourage you to do the things that you've been putting off. Okay? Like I said, finish that course. Take that cooking class. Women, cut bangs. Men, shave your head. Grow it out. Whatever you can do. Don't wait to do these things because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Do not boast about tomorrow for you, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. So take advantage now. So now let me bring it back to, let me bring it back to the spiritual. If you've been thinking, you know what? I want to invite this person to church. Don't wait for a special service. Don't wait for our friendship service. Don't wait for Easter, for Mother's Day, for Christmas. Get them online now. Invite them to the Bible studies on, on, on Friday. They're online. You can, they don't have to leave their home. Start incorporating everything now. You can start getting better now. If you're, if you're saved, guess what? God bless you. But is there something you can do now? Is there something that you can, something more that you can do? That's what I'm encouraging with you, church. That's what I'm motivating you to do right now. That's what God told me to bring. And that was the way that I know how to preach. Just listen to what the Spirit tells me and give it the way that I know how to do it. In closing, I just want to say this to you all. I hope that you are blessed. I hope that you're safe. And most of all, I just hope that you know now is the time to do things. If there's someone that you're looking at, someone you're concerned about, talk to them now. Don't wait for anybody else. Don't wait for another moment. Let's bring more people to God today. Thank you and God bless. Amen, saints. We pray that that message encouraged you, motivated you, challenged you, spoke to you, stirred you up. Um, we just thank you so much for joining us this morning. We thank you for partnering with us and just being with one, one with us in this vision, in this journey. Amen. And so we just want to remind you to do three things down below. Um, it's hit the like button, the notification button, and also the subscribe button. And that way you're just in the loop as to when we post things here on our YouTube channel. I'll notify you when we post sermons as well as the Kids Are Cool Ministry lesson. So we just want to keep you in the loop. We want to stay connected with you, even if it's through this. Amen. We just love you. We pray blessings upon you until we see you again.